Hey everyone, Android Cemetery here welcoming you to a new 3D modeling tutorial where I show you the step-by-step -step process of how to model a sci-fi crate. In this six-part tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model, texture, and render using Blender 2.9, Substance Painter, and Marmoset Toolbag 3. I hope you enjoy the course, and with that, let's get started with part one, modeling in Blender. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. This is Android Cemetery, and today we're going to be modeling a sci-fi crate. So right now we're in, we're in Blender, and we're just going to get straight into it. So we're going to delete the light and the camera. We don't need it. All we need is the default cube. So I'm going to press G and Z to just move it up so it's on floor level. I'm going to scale it in the x-axis with S, X, to something about here maybe. I'm also just going to scale it up a bit, which is with the S key, G, Z, to move it back up again. And first off, I'm just going to add a few bevels so it's not so square. So I'm going to tap into edit mode with the tab, 2 to go into edge mode, select each edge with shift and left mouse, and then control B to bevel. And you can see the bevel isn't quite right. And the reason why is because we need to set the scale. So I'm gonna tab, tab out, select the cube, control A, and we're gonna apply the scale. So if we go back into tab mode, select the edges, control B to bevel, you can see it's a much better bevel. And we're just going to bevel it, maybe around here. I'm going to press 3 to go into face select. Select this face. I'm going to press I to inset to around about here. And then I'm just going to move it up with G and Z to maybe around here. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom face. So I to inset, G, Z to pull it down to around there. So now I just want to make a separation between the lid and the base of the sci-fi crate. So now I'm going to press Ctrl R for an edge loop. I'm going to put it around here. Ctrl B to bevel it. and then I'm gonna extrude it along its normals with Alt E and then extrude faces along normals. And I'm gonna extrude it in just a bit like that. I'm just gonna pull these up a bit and make this area a bit smaller. So I'm gonna press one to go into front mode, Alt Z to go into X-ray mode, press one to go into vertices. We go into X-ray mode just so we can select both the back the front vertices. So I'm going to select them all. G, Z to move them up a bit. And then select these ones. G, Z. Just to make it a bit smaller. Just like that. So Alt Z to get out of X-ray mode. I'm pretty happy with that. So right now I just want to add two separate grooves over here. Uh, that's where the latches are going to be. So I want to add a few edge loops. But first off, we want to fix this face. Because right now, it's an end gone. It's got more than four sides. So pretty easy. Just select these two vertices over here. Press J to join. These two over here. J to join. And right now, it's not an end gone anymore. It's got four sides. Do the same thing with the bottom. J. Okay, so now, Control R for an edge loop. And I'm gonna right click just to cancel it so it's in the center. Control B to bevel it to around about here. I'm gonna press 2 to go in edge mode. 
shift alt left click each loop so it selects the entire loop I'm gonna control B bevel it again to around about here okay cool also I want to just add another edge loop over here so control R and add another edge loop maybe around here So I want these two to be indented. I'm going to face mode with three. Select this face. I want these faces in the front here. Don't want the entire loop. So the easiest way to do that is to select this face, go down here, hold down control, and left click again. And that'll select from the starting point here to the end point here. Same thing. I'm going to hold down shift, select here, and then Hold down control, select here. So I want to just push these faces in. So I'm going to press I to inset to around about here. Hold down control while in inset mode, pull it down to around about here. And then left click when you're happy with them. Now I just want to snap these faces back so it aligns with this. I'm going to go up here in snapping mode and I'm gonna click snap to vertex so now I'm just gonna go into face mode 3 select this face GZ to move it up hold down control and that enables snapping and I'm gonna snap to this vertex that way now it's aligned this is just an easier way of doing it as opposed to having to turn on snapping, turn it off every time. G, Z, hold down control, snap it to this vertex. I'm just going to do the same thing to here. G, Z, hold down control, snap to this vertex. And I'm also going to do it to this face over here. So G, Y, snap to this vertex and same thing over here G Y snap to this vertex want to add another of these indents at the top here just for some extra detail so I'm gonna add another a ring loop around here control R to maybe around here press 3 to go into face mode Select this face, hold down control, select this face. I'm gonna press I to inset and left click, press I again to inset it, and then hold down control to pull it down to about here. And I'm gonna do the same thing in the front here and then in the back here. So I'm just gonna add a edge loop over here with control R. Uh, 3 to go into face mode, select this face, hold down control, select this face. I'm going to press I to inset, left click, I again, and then hold down control and just pull it in to right about there. So now I'm going to go to the back, 3, press this face, select these faces, I to inset, left click, press I again to inset, hold down control and just push it in around about there. I'm also just going to push these side areas in because we want handles at the side here. So I want an area where we can put the handle. So control R to add an edge loop maybe around here and I'm going to add another edge loop with control R around about here. So I'm going to select press 3 to go into face mode to select this face, select this face, I to insert I'm gonna scale it in the Z. I'm gonna press I again, and then Control to push it back. Okay, so I'm more or less finished blocking out the base. So let's get started with the hinges, which are gonna be at this back here. So I'm just gonna add two hinges, one here, one here. So instead of adding an object in the center, because essentially where the 3D cursor is, is where the object is going to spawn in. I want the 3D cursor to actually be where about the hinge is going to be. So I'm going to press 2 
to go to edge mode, I'm going to select these two edges over here. I'm going to press shift S to go into snapping mode. And I want cursor to select it. Now the cursor is in this area over here between these two edges we selected. So now if I tab out of edit mode and if I press shift A and add a cylinder, you can see the cylinder is right spot. This cylinder is by default 32 vertices. It's way too much for such a small piece of detail that we're going to use. So we're going to turn this down to around 12 and then press enter. So now select this S to scale it down to around about there. Rotate on the Y, so R, Y. And I want it perfectly 90, so I can just type in 90 and then press enter. I also want to scale it on the X. So around about here. And I'm also scale it down. And I'm also just going to pull it out G, Y to about here. Now I want hinges on both sides, so I'm just going to mirror this part over here. So I'm going to select the object, go into Modifiers tab, Add Modifier, Mirror. Now I can see that nothing's happened. The reason why is because the origin point is in the center of the object. And we want the origin point to be the center of the world. So we want the 3D cursor back in the center of the world with Shift S, cursor to world origin. Then we'll select this object, right click, set origin to 3D cursor. I can see that we've mirrored it, but it's not mirroring in the right place. It's mirroring on the Z and not on the X. The reason why is because the rotation is off. If we press N, you can see that the rotation is Y on 90. We want all of these to be zeroed out because right now it's messing with our mirror. If we press Control A and apply our rotation, you can see that now it's mirroring properly on the X. Usually if you have a mirroring problem like that, it's because you haven't applied the rotation. So I'm going to press N to hide that. And I'm pretty happy with where those hinges are. Okay, so now I just want to finish off these hinges. I'm going to select this object, tab to go into edit mode, select one of these edges, shift S, press the two selected, press tab to get out of edit mode, shift A, mesh, add in the cube, scale it down. I want to scale it out in the x-axis, scale it in the z, and then scale it in the y, s, y. So it's about something like this. And then I just want to move it into place. So gz to move it up, gy to move it back, around about here. And just to add some detail to it, I'm going to go into edit mode, press 2 to go into edge select, select these two edges over here, control B to bevel, you can see that it's not beveling properly because we haven't applied our scale, but I, th I think it looks pretty good like that actually. I'm just going to bevel it to about there, I'm going to go into vertices mode with 1, I'm going to select all these vertices. Now I can see if I press GZ, I haven't selected all of the vertices. And that's because this vertice is hiding behind these areas. So if we're not in X-ray mode, we won't be able to select it. So we pretty much need to be in X-ray mode to select all the vertices that are at the back. So Alt-Z to go into X-ray mode, select all these, GZ, move it down to around about here. Alt-Z to exit in X-ray mode. I'm just going to move these up a bit. So Alt-Z, select this. G, Z, move it up, just so it's on this edge. Now I want this piece to be mirrored, not only to the bottom side, but also onto this side. So to do that, I'm going to press Tab, I'm going to select the base, Tab to go into edit mode, 
2 to go to edge select mode, I'm going to select these two vertices in the center. One over here, one over here. Shift S, cursor to selected, tab to exit edit mode. I'm going to select this piece now, go into modifier tab, edit modifier, and add a mirror. I'm going to right click, set origin, set origin of this geometry to 3D cursor. You can see that it's now mirroring on the, the x-axis. And because it's in the center over here, if I press Z, it's also going to mirror on the opposite end as well. Now you can see with these hinges over here, the jagged lines, we actually want these to be smoothed down. So I'm going to select this, right click, shade smooth. But you can see that now that everything is smooth, even this edge over here, which we don't want. So if we go over here in object data properties, under normals, you press auto smooth. You can see that it's almost smooth, we just want to adjust it to be a bit higher. And the reason why this isn't smoothing out is because we need to apply the scale. So control A, apply scale, you can see that's properly smoothed down. Also, just in case you forgot to save your work, probably best to save your work. So just go to file, save, save it wherever you want. I'm just going to call mine sci-fi crate. And then save. So that's it for part one. Hope you guys had fun. And in part two, we're going to continue modeling the crate. See you guys then.